Good morning, Alteryx fans, or afternoon, or evening, or good night, wherever you are. It's night for me right now, but when this video publishes, it will be morning. But greetings, wherever you are. I've got to start out with a little explanation. Um, the last video I know was a bit of a disaster. I didn't realize how bad it was audio wise and lag wise until I actually published it. So I apologize for that. Hopefully with the closed captions, you could still follow what was going on. I didn't put any captions on it. You've got to go on YouTube and just turn on the closed captions, but it was really bad. And when I look back at it, I was kind of embarrassed. And you all know that I'm not much of a perfectionist when it comes to video quality. So I spent some time tonight troubleshooting that it's something to do with my Wi-Fi signal and the Wi-Fi extender that I have in this room. So two videos ago, the I think it was the day three and four, that video, the, the video quality, especially at the start, was terrible. And then it improved once I switched the Wi-Fi signal. Then I went and got the extender, and then the video quality was very good. On the last video, the audio quality was awful. I'm going to see how this one turns out. This will be a shorter video than the previous ones. And I'll gauge by that. I've got an Ethernet hookup on the way. I have a cable, but it's I don't have the adapter and there's no Ethernet plug on this laptop. So I'm adapting as we go. I'm improving the quality, hopefully, in every video. That's my goal, is every video that I make is somehow an improvement on the one before. But I do apologize for that. I intend at some point to go back and remake the last two videos so that they're of a better quality, so that this is kind of evergreen, enduring content. That's my goal. But we'll see if we have time for that. Awesome things. I have had several people in the last couple of days approach me and say that they're doing the challenge. They've shown me screenshots of watching the videos. That's fantastic. Um, this really is kind of a labor of love for me. It is a vehicle to create some more content, to get some more stuff on my YouTube channel. But I really am doing this myself, going through this recertification process. And I really do want to make Alteryx approachable to people that, that may be scared off by the niche nature of Alteryx, the fact that it's kind of a closed community of people that use it, the price tag, let's be honest. And so I want people to understand that you can come in here, you can get a free download, you can earn a certificate, and you can set yourself apart from the matting crowd of Pythonistas and people that can whiteboard SQL for days. There's a million of them. I mean, they're just, I mean, more than a million. There's probably a billion of them at this point. You don't necessarily want to be competing with those people to be the greatest SQL querier of all time or the greatest Python code writer of all time. Th those titles are taken and you're not going to get them. What I think is you get good enough in those skills and you master a more refined skill like Alteryx, something that not everybody has, and that's going to get you some attention in the job market. So that is my goal with this content. Y'all tell me if I'm uh, making the mark. With that, and with me building the YouTube channel, 400 subscriptions. Thank you, all of you. Those of you that are watching, those of you that just subscribed and never thought about me again, I know that's happening, but it, it's an honor. I am glad it's a small milestone compared to some of the other people that are out there in the space, but it's really cool and it, it took some work to get here. And I really do appreciate the fact that people are subscribed to this channel, especially given the fact that I'm a terrible YouTuber and I blow off my own channel for months at a time. I promise this is a priority going forward. And so I'm not going to do that anymore. But um, yeah, it just it means a lot to me that 400 of you are following me here. And I, I remember getting to 400 on LinkedIn and thinking how cool that was that, that 400 people were paying attention to me in some form. So a lot harder to get 400 people on YouTube than it is on LinkedIn. I guarantee you that. Today, um, we are going to do a weekly challenge. 
So I'm going to post today when this posts will be Thursday, and that is day seven of the challenge. We're bumping things earlier as I get to them and I realize, hey, this is not going to take as much time as I initially thought it would. The first two sections of the getting started learning path, we truncated both of those. So instead of four days, they became two days. This is day seven. We're going to take this whole day just to do one weekly challenge. If you want to lean forward and go into more study, go right ahead. We will talk about that, uh, what, what's coming up next after we get done with this. I want to walk you soup to nuts, soup to nuts through a weekly challenge. And we're going to download it. We're going to work through it. We're going to post it the whole nine yards. So with that, let's go ahead and get to it. Here's the title page of the community. And we're going to go to Learn Academy and Weekly Challenge. The challenge we're going to do is number 164. You can scroll through the pages and try and find it, or you can just go to the index. Page one of the index is challenges one through 300. So let's just scroll down. Ooh. There is 164 Retail Therapy. If you look here on the menu, you can see the title. It's hyperlinked to that page. You can see that it's a basic challenge, which is good because we're at the basic level. We haven't passed any certs yet. You can see what's actually going to be done here. Now, you can, <laughs> you'll notice people aren't that great with these tags. Some of them are redundant. You can see it says preparation twice. Data analysis, join, data preparation. Yeah, it says preparation and data preparation. Pretty sure those are the same thing. And then transform, we're leaning forward just a little bit. So we've done the data prep tools so far. There's going to be a couple tools here that you're not 100% familiar with if this is your first blush at Alteryx. I will talk you through them. We're going to have to use a join tool. We're going to have to use a transformation tool. It will be very simple. Let's not take that one. It says difficult. Retail therapy. You go into this page and you'll see two downloads. There is the file download. It's usually a zip file or YXZP. That means the inputs are zipped into one file with the workflow. Go ahead and download that. Click the little download arrow and you can see that's going to your downloads folder. The next file is going to be the solution. Every time they post a weekly challenge, they post it on Monday morning. Then the following Monday when they post the next weekly challenge, they also put up the solution for last week's. A bit like the New York Times crossword puzzle. I urge you to just hold off on the solution. I mean, we're working through it together here, but just in general. If you're doing older weekly challenges, the ones that have the solution up, hold off on that. Don't go checking people's spoiler tags to see what their answers are. There's learning to be had in overcoming obstacles. So if you get in there and it's just killing you and you're kind of pushing the, the rock of Sisyphus, just keep going. That, that's where the learning happens. Don't, don't waste like days on it. But, okay, let's open it in the folder. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it in downloads. I don't use this laptop for weekly challenges very often, so I'm fine with trashing my downloads folder. Just go ahead and double click it from here and it's gonna bring up Designer. It will go through the 56 checks of whether or not you want to actually open the zip file. Yes. Import. Yes. There we go. Only three. I exaggerated slightly. Can probably did wonders for the sound quality. Yeah, one of the troubleshooting steps that I implemented and did a quick test video and it seemed to work out okay, fingers crossed, was I downloaded the 480p on the video, and I think 720 on the audio. So if the quality is unacceptable to you, we'll wait until I can hook straight into the ethernet and we'll see what that does for me. Anyway, enough on the shenanigans of the last two videos. Weekly challenge 164. We need to determine the items of clothing that have the highest average rating. In our analysis, we must include one, 
only items of clothing that have at least 10 positive feedback reviews and two, the five highest rated clothing items from each class. Let's look at our data. You know what, let's not. I sometimes like to just look at the instructions and maybe you see what you can glean just from what they're telling you to do. And you start to visualize in your head the problem set. What are we gonna do with this? We have items of clothing that have a rating of some sort. Now that rating may be an average, it may not be. It may be a raw score, in which case we would have to calculate an average. We want to include only items of clothing that have at least 10 positive feedback reviews. So that indicates to me we're going to have to filter. Because you're going to have to, you may have to count the positive feedback reviews, but at some point you're going to have to filter from the ones that have 10 or more to the ones that have 9 or less. And then we're going to have to pick the five highest rated clothing items. That tells me that we're at some point towards the end, we're going to do sort sample. So we're going to sort the rated ratings and then we're going to pick the five highest that speaks to a sort sample tool combination. All right. Now let's look at the data, do some brief EDA. So before we even run the workflow, we've got our data here. Our data preview gives us only our first 100 records. We can widen that out. Oh boy. We have a very wide review text string field here. That's annoying. Field one looks like some sort of just sequential ID. Field two, clothing ID. If you look at it, you can definitely see some repeat values, 1077, 77, 77, 77. So it's clearly not a granular field, it's some sort of classification or grouping. So probably each item has an ID, but black t-shirt is one code. Age of the reviewer, I'm guessing, the title of their review, the text of their review. I didn't see anything in instructions that addresses that, so I don't know if we even need to mess with it. Okay. And now we've got a rating. So the rating definitely looks like a raw score. So we probably will have to average it at some point. Recommended, that looks like a binary field. Don't, don't see. And then positive feedback count. Okay. So that to me is probably where the 10 or more is going to come in. Division name, department name, class name. Those are all categorical. Okay. So we've had a look at the data. Now sometimes what you want to do is just put a browse tool on the data input and run it just to just to see what's going on. But the first thing you usually want to do is just clean up your data set a little bit. We can look at this and say those string fields, we don't need them. So we'll do ourselves a favor if we just drop a select tool here. Let's go outside of the container. Let's drop a select tool and get rid of those title and review text. It's not going to impact anything. What else do we notice? Well, it's coming from a CSV file, comma separated value. If you understand anything about a comma separated value file, everything, all the data in it is stored as strings and they're separated by commas, hence the name. What that means is you bring a CSV you bring data from a CSV into Alteryx, Alteryx makes no assumptions about what kind of data it is. So you look at the configuration pane and all you see are vstring, 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 variable length strings. Even things that you probably are gonna to have to turn into a number at some point. So we'll do ourselves a favor and just go ahead and convert some of these to numbers. Feedback reviews, how many positive feedbacks do they have? That we're going to change to an integer. Age, I don't think we need to mess with. Let's go ahead and deselect that as well. Clothing ID, it looks like we're going to have to group by. Rating, recommended, that's a Boolean. Ah, just leave it. Division name, department name, class name. Rating, we're gonna to have to average. So let's go ahead and that was discrete as well. It's an integer. So we can make that 
just make that integer 16. All right, let's run it and see what we're left with. Yeah, the review text fields are all long string fields, so it's saying they were truncated on the input data. Not surprising, people get long-winded on the internet. Cool, so looking at the results field, or the results pane, sorry, we can see that we've got field one, clothing ID, rating, recommended, I don't think we need, but we'll just leave it. Positive feedback count, division name, department name, class name. That's fine. Now what do we wanna do? In your analysis, include only items of clothing that have at least 10 positive feedback reviews. Awesome, let's cut it down even further because we got 24,000 rows here. Let's go basic filter, positive feedback count, greater than or equal to 10. Let's see what we're left with now. Looks like it's gonna be a minority of that data. Okay, and the true outcome gives us, nice, cut down 1,567 records. So that's helpful. Now we have kind of a manageable data set. And it looks like it worked, our positive feedback count, everything in there is two digits, so 10 or more. All right. Now we need to find the five highest rating clothing items from each class. Over here we have class name, and we need the rating. And then clothing items, it looks like, is clothing ID. So really, we could probably get rid of that recommended field as well. Let's just let it ride. So what do we wanna do next? Let's go ahead and group and we're gonna use this summarize tool. Now we haven't learned the summarize tool. The summarize tool is very adaptable, but it's also pretty easy to use. It just takes a little bit to get the hang of it. The way you use the summarize tool is you just highlight fields and you decide what you wanna do with them with this add. Sorry, dark mode is not doing us a ton of favors here, but I assure you it makes my face much, much less blue. Out the heck with it. I'll turn off dark mode. Okay, user settings, customization, light mode. And I said, let there be light. Okay, cool. Let's configure our summarize tool. We need items of clothing. We got a group by clothing ID from each class. So let's group by class name as well, and we need the rating. And let's take a numeric average. What do you say? And let's see how that works out. So now we're down to 267 records left. We have clothing ID, class name, average rating. Okay. Let's go ahead and sort it. By average rating, descending. and see what that does. Cool, so we got all the fives on top, fives a perfect rating. Now let's go sample, and let's pick the first five from each class. Let's put a browse tool on it, Control Shift B. Oh. Control Shift B and Control R to run the workflow. Cool. 
cool. So let's do a spot check. We're not going to, that gave us 82 records. Let's look at our output. There we go, look at that. Super simple. 82 records in the output. We have 82 records on our end. And we have, we check the blouses, 817, 15, 34, 40, and 45. 17, 15, 34, 40, and 45. The ratings are five, four and two thirds, 4.61, 45, 45. Yep. Got it. So I think if you scroll down, you'll see similar answers all the way down. And that is a pretty simple weekly challenge. Folks, that is absolutely the kind of problem that this, this way for you, that way for me, this way for you. That is absolutely the kind of problem that you can expect to see on the core exam. And that would be towards the end. Now, there was, I think in the official answer, there was a join. I just simplified it, so there was no need for a join. The actual published solution did have a join tool in there, but you can see we got to the right answer with a, a simpler solution. That's always a good thing. More efficiency, less work, is great. It's it's just an empiric good. We always want more efficiency. Cool. So let's go ahead and post it. Now let's see if we can get through this rigmarole. The screenshot generally does not work. Let's go ahead and save it. So I did the screenshot. Let's save it as PNG, I'm guessing. Sure. OneDrive pictures, screenshots. Let's call it challenge 164. If we can't put it in the spoiler, then we should be able to attach it. But I really hope we can put it in the spoiler because it's just more fun. All right. Now you want epic bragging rights. At, well, Alteryx community is all about showing everybody else what you can do. And in, and in a healthy and fun and kind of mildly competitive way. So when you get a weekly challenge done or when you get a cert done, show it off. Show it off. We're all about that. Okay, let's go reply to the initial post. Come on, work for me today, spoiler tag. You know you want to. Nope. Oh well. I don't know why it doesn't work on this computer. That's fine. Pictures. I got a lot of pictures in here. Screenshots. Challenge 164. Files not supported. <laughs> okay. Guess we're not attaching the picture. Oh, we've got to save our workflow. Forgot about that. Here you go. So we're still on the start file. Let's go ahead and save as something else. I'm cool with leaving it in the downloads. I usually take the start file portion and just put my name. There we go. Now that spoiler tag thing, just pasting the screenshot, that works fine for me on my work computer. It doesn't work on this. I'm working off of my personal laptop here. And for some reason that cut and paste just doesn't work off of this computer. No idea why. One of you computer savvy people out there know. It's a, it's a goes as a PNG file either way, so I don't get it, but all right. So we've saved the workflow and to be super thorough, I mean, nobody's ever going to check this, but to be super thorough, if you're one of the first people to do the weekly challenge, you should export it as a zip file, but we're just going to attach it downloads or wherever you saved it. Why are these icons so huge? Go medium icon, people. Let's do this. 
and I can't find it. Of course. Did it save somewhere weird? There we go. Start file because I unzipped it. Challenge 164, Bellamy. Sometimes you'll have to go into that start file folder. There we are. And let's post it. Now, I don't know if I'll get dinged. I may have already submitted it. We detected HTML that is not allowed and have modified your post. How do I have HTML? Please submit your post again. There we go. All right. So we've posted. If you want to go check it, scroll to the bottom. Go, go to page 99 of the submissions for this. And there we are. And our non-existent spoiler. It's fine. Nobody's going to come check it anyway. Hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. So that is that. If you have any questions on that process, other than obviously the thing that I can't seem to get past, which is actually submitting the screenshot, please let me know in the comments. But that is our weekly challenge. That's a good one to do right now because look at it, most of those tools we already learned. We learned select, we learned filter, we learned sort, and we learned sample. The only tool that we use there that we haven't learned yet is the summarize tool. And we used it super simple. Group by, group by and sum are the easiest actions to do. And the only thing we did that was even somewhat advanced was a numeric average. And that's not really advanced at all. That was a great weekly challenge for us to do after doing the data prep section. Okay. So what did we do? We submitted a weekly challenge. We worked all the way through it. Congratulations. And we turned it in. If that was your first one and you just got your, I believe it's the Kumbu Icefall badge, congrats. Let's look at our badges. My profile. Oof, look at that. Oh, it's not the Kumbu Icefall. It's the Base Camp. Base Camp Challenge. If that was your first weekly challenge, like, uh, like Obi-Wan said to Luke, you've taken your first steps into a larger world. Congratulations. Let's talk about what is next. Today is day seven. Tomorrow, I owe you a video for days eight and nine and maybe 10. I've still got to figure out how long it's actually going to take. But let's go into the learning path and see what we got up ahead of us. We're in getting started. Sorry for my crazy scrolly wheel. Getting started, we've done. Data prep, we just completed. We are in combining and cleansing data. I think this one may edge up onto three days. When you look at it, you've got some pretty interesting stuff to get into. You have the two join tools, union and join. You've got text to columns, which is a parsing tool, and the unique tool. You're going on three different palettes. Unique is simple. Text to columns is relatively simple. Simple. Blending and joining are some difficult concepts. So I don't know. Let's see how long the videos are. Interactive lesson. Six minutes. Yeah, no big deal. So you're going to have a main video on here, which is uh, data basics, which is like 30 minutes. This one may be a two-dayer as well. Which is great because we can clear up time. What I intend to do is save all the days we can on these early sections. We're going to pay for it on the back end. The last core topics and uh, the other, oh, Jesus, come on. Core topics and continuing core topics will probably each take four days. I looked ahead at those and those are complex topics. They have practice exercises. Uh, this one has a capstone project. We'll have to spend at least one day just on the capstone project that incorporates all the tools. But what I really want to do with the extra days that we're saving up is I want to spend an entire day on test prep. We already had a day blocked off for you're going to take your mic foundational micro cert. I want to take the, the day before that to go over the study guide and just study. We can, we can do a study with me session. We can make that a live session if you like. Let me know what you prefer in the comments. 
But those are the days that we're freeing up now. We're going to use those to study together or just kind of me make a video and, and you watch it. So that's what's coming next. Our next test, today is day seven. We've got day eight and nine at least for combining and cleansing data, practice exercise. We will probably do another weekly challenge after that. So eight, nine, 10, prep day 11, and I hope to test on the 12th for the foundational micro cert. Do not be, even if you're terrible at tests, do not be intimidated. These first two tests, they are very simple. They, are, they don't take long. They are talking about the, the clickology, the, the interface, whether or not you know how to use designer at a basic level. There's no practical application. You can get through those tests quite simply. Don't be ashamed if you fail them. I'm sure people do. But don't be afraid of them either. They're, they're not meant to be scary. They're meant to be approachable. Okay, so that is what we're doing next time, days eight and nine, and the combining and cleansing section. Our next test is the foundational micro-credential. I intend to take that on day 12. May bump that up to day 11 if we, if we get through things quickly. Folks, if you would please, I know that we've passed 400 subscribers. I really want to take this thing big time. And I want these challenges to be an asset to you and to get in front of as many eyeballs as possible because I think I can help people with these. Please subscribe to the channel. Please turn on your notifications. Please like this video. I won't say smash the like button. Just click the like button. I don't want you to break your mouse. Tell me what else you'd like to see. You know that the plan for November is mastering Tableau. We're going to do a 30-day challenge where we are going to knock out that Tableau data analyst certification with the help of Miss Marlene Meyer and the book that I just got. Well, all right. So let me turn off the other screen. If my computer will let me. There we go. All right. Now it's all me again. Folks, I really appreciate your attention. Thanks for watching this video. And as always, if you stick with me, I'm going to make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.